all external noise, pretty much. Okay, so today what we're gonna do is this is the in-class lecture video. So we're gonna wrap up complex numbers, okay? Complex numbers, and well, that's about it. The only point I wanted to make is this video I'll post it on my YouTube channel, and if you log in to connect, the link is already there. I put, posted a bookmark, but uh, let's see. The YouTube channel is, let's see, uh, uh, it's not here. So this is the YouTube, my YouTube channel is HTTP www.youtube.com user Varath Berkeley because Recording using Tegrity, I have to be logged in and stuff. But anyway, if you go into uh, Connect, you'll see this link in the bookmark. Okay? So everybody has Connect Access now? No? Who doesn't have Connect Access still? So you still couldn't see the video, huh? Okay. You don't have access yet? So how many? Two? So one. Raise your hands again. Higher. So one, two, three, four of you don't have connect access. That's, well, that's kind of okay for the exam because the exam's on 2050, number one. Number two, as far as um, the complex numbers homework, that's due on the 20th, okay? So I'll try to get it to you by Monday. So if not, well, by next week, it should get resolved. So for those of you who have seen the, video like do you have any general questions well the good news about complex numbers is those of you who don't have access to connect did you look at appendix b in the book so appendix b has so you looked at appendix b yes so if you did well you also all have the homework right that i sent out yes no okay so do you have any questions that's my so you have uh, so any questions on complex numbers or the homework itself? No? Okay, so then let me ask you a question. So let's look at some examples of complex numbers. So this is some problems from the homework, not all. So you can, let's see. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. No, those are advanced problems. So let me see. Let's let me try to get on YouTube. Okay, I am online. What do you know? So let's see. Which one? Hopefully, okay. La, la, la. W -W. Okay, awesome. So here it is. Here's my YouTube channel. Which one are you talking about? This one? This is not working? All right, yeah, I was looking at it today. It just doesn't. Yeah, so I'll, these are IIT JEE problems, so I'll fix this. Uh, but what you should look at, it'll be something titled like, you're welcome to look at this, okay? These problems are much more difficult. Uh, anyway, I'll address these shortly. But what you want to look at is it'll be labeled like this, EE 2060 week one lecture three. That's exactly what it'll be labeled, okay? That's what this in-class video is, is that clear? These ones, which you're welcome to look at, are much, much more difficult. Okay, these are, you heard of the Math Olympiad? Yes, these are like more difficult than the Math Olympiad problems. You're welcome to look at it. I'll not ask you this on the exam, not even as extra credit. Okay, this is just to uh, whet your appetite on interesting complex numbers problems. All right, I'll fix that. So let me write that down. So fix uh, IIT, Indian Institute of Technology, JEE, Joint Entrance Exam, uh, video one on YouTube. All right, I'll do that. Anything else? All right. So let's look at one example. Let's start with something simple, I guess. So example one, there's actually problem one from your homework. 
express uh, in standard form. I'm just paraphrasing it. A plus I B. Okay. So let's look at uh, which one can we look at? Let's look at well I I to the eight. Well, no, actually we already did this yesterday. We did something similar. Hold on, hold on. Let's do something else. Let's do this. This question was asked. Actually, even better. Let's do G. One third plus three I, the whole cube. There you go. Okay. And also, in lecture, what I'll do is I'll use this TI 89 emulator. Where is it? So here is uh, the TI emulator. Here's the link to it. Okay. Again, if you go to my YouTube video, you can easily capture, you can easily capture the link. Uh, let's see. So there it is, my little TI-89, right? So I can say 2 plus 2, then I get obviously 4, right? So it works. So anyway, I'll use that whenever I can, but let's get back to the problem. Let me exit without saving state. Okay. So the question is, you want to represent this in the form A plus IB. So how would you go about doing this? And what's up with that? Oh, that line is the division in the board there. Kind of sucks for the projector <laughs> position. All right, so how would you go about doing this? One third plus three i, the whole cube. So you want to express this in the form a plus ib. So what would you do? Yes, ideas. Yeah. Yeah. So the idea is well, one thing you could do is you could use a plus b the whole cube. You can expand it out, right? But as you will see in some of the homework problems, this will be to the power hundred. We'll do that shortly. Okay. It's not feasible. So remember, I told you in uh, yesterday's lecture. So let me write it down. The idea. So the trick to using complex numbers in uh, complex numbers. In engineering, okay, it's not really math in math, because complex numbers is a very rich field. But for us, are you comfortable in going between standard form, uh, polar form, and exponential form? By the way, I just gave back your labs, so all of you got 100% on lab one, as you know from yesterday's lab. It's lab one is a gimme. But one of the things I noticed was. Few of you got confused between polar and exponential. These are not the same thing, right? So the second question asked for polar form, you gave exponential form, that's fine. But a couple of you didn't really, I guess, type in the second question, the part B of problem one into the calculator correctly. So if you want to know, stop by my office hours. I've written it on your lab. But the bottom line is, again, if you can go between standard form, polar form, and exponential form. By the way, total aside, there's nothing complex about complex numbers. I don't even know why it's called complex numbers. Right? Somebody can find out historically why they're called complex numbers. Let me know. Does anybody know why they're called complex numbers? So if it, figure it out if you can, and let me know. Anyway, so what's, so the trick is convert this. Let z equals one third three i, z in, so in polar form, what's this equal to? Or exponential form, let's say exponential form. So if you, well, in lab yesterday, we talked about exponential and polar form. It's also on the videos online. It's also in your appendix B. So what do you got to do? So let's say you want to write this in exponential form. So what's the first thing you got to do? Yeah. Well, it's e to the... So what goes here in terms of z? Huh? No, it's not the real number. So, so in other words, right, if you want to plot this on the argon plane, let's see if I can do this properly. One third is 0.333 somewhere here. So here is one third. I want to attempt to draw this to scale, something like that. Yes? Sorry? 
one third of root of 10. So, okay, that's the actual number, fine. But what goes here in terms of Z? That's my question. Huh? So what is R? That's right. So what's R in terms of Z? No, no, no. In terms of Z, what is it? You're right. It's R. So it's R e to the J theta. But in terms of the Z, it's magnitude of Z. Yes? e to the J argument of Z. Yes? So in other words, you're represented by the length and this angle. Oh, my beautiful picture. Theta. Yes? Okay. So let me... Sorry about that little wine that comes in the middle. Hopefully it's not too distracting on the whiteboard. Okay. So what's the magnitude of Z? How do I compute the magnitude, the length of this? Uh, length of R? Yes, yeah, square root. So in other words, I have... So this is R, yes. This is one-third. This is also three. This is 90 degrees. So what's R? This is our data. So what theorem do I use to compute R? In this right angle triangle, what theorem do I use to compute R? Pythagorean theorem. So what is it? One ninth plus nine, right? So this is e to the j. So inverse tangent of what? Three over one third, right? What's that? That's, you got to be careful. It's not one. Okay. So what is the square root of eighty-two? Yes. Over square root of nine, which is three. Okay. E to the j inverse tangent of what? S simplify this. Nine. Okay. Now, let's keep this out. Now, what happens is on the exam, since uh, I don't allow the use of calculators, if this problem were asked, you would stop right here. Okay? This, uh, actually, no. I take it back. <laughs> you wouldn't stop right here. You would expand e to the j theta in terms of cosine and sine, multiply it out, and just leave it. Okay? But I won't, like I told you in lab yesterday, I won't ask problems like these. I'll show you an example. The next problem we'll do is more up the alley of what I would ask. In the sense, you can compute all these angles. That is, these angles will be the, this theta here will either be 30, 60, 30, 45, or 60. That's how I'll give you. Okay. Is that clear? All right. So let's keep going. So this is square root of... So now what you need to do is let's use our calculators and compute what the inverse tangent of 9 is. It's a bad problem I picked, but that's okay. It gives me. All right. So let's do, am I in radians mode? Yeah. So inverse, come on. There. <laughs> that doesn't help. Let's approximate that. There it is. Okay. So that's in radians, okay? Is that clear? I approximated it. That's fine, okay? The reason why I'm going to leave it in radians, you can do it in degrees if you want. I always do it in radians, okay? And then what I need is, so if you go back here, let me see if I can do this at the same time. So this is going to be approximately square root of 82 over 3, e to the j theta is cosine theta, which is 1.46 radians, is c if you will, but I don't really put any units. In the sense, if there's no degree symbol, it's radians plus j sine 1.46. Yes? I don't know if you can see it. Let me move it around. Okay? Any questions so far? So this is equal to, well, let's find the cosine of 1.46. 
there. So that's 0.11. So square root of 82 over 3 times 0.11 plus j, uh, second sine of 1.46. Approximate that. 0.99, okay? And if you think about it, right, as you're doing this problem, notice that this is almost 1, yes? Does that make sense? Yes or no? If this is almost 1, what does it tell you about theta? Close to 90 degrees, yes? Does that make sense? Why? You're right, it does make sense, but why? Look at this picture, right? The real part is one third, the imaginary part is really big, okay? So the imaginary part is three, the real part is one third, yes? So this angle is going to be pretty close to 90. So just bottom line is just think as you're doing this. In other words, the imaginary part is nine times the real part, ten times. So anyway, so this is equal to, well, I'm not going to simplify this any further because I have to use my emulator and it's a pain. 3 plus j square root of 82.99 over 3. Okay? And that's it. We're done. So here's the final answer. But the point of this question is for you to understand that mm, you should be very comfortable in going between standard form, polar form, exponential form. Any questions? All right. Any questions? None. Yeah. Let's do another one. Okay, this is another problem from your homework. Any questions? Okay, so here's another one. This is actually problem seven, but right? this is example two. If x minus i y is square root of a minus i b over c minus i d, prove x squared plus y squared, the whole squared is a squared plus b squared over c squared plus d squared. This you cannot do on your calculator. So I said on your on the introduction to the problem said not all of the problems can be solved on a calculator. Yeah. So how do you prove this? First of all, let me ask you this. Have you done proofs in math? Okay. So how do you do proofs? So like what are the different kinds of proofs? Like have you ever done proof that for example um, have you ever done the proof that square root of 2 is irrational? So you assume square root of 2 is of the form p over q. That is, you assume square root of 2 is rational. Have you done proofs like that? You assume the contrary. Yes, no? Yes? So what are they called, such proofs? Proofs by contradiction. Okay. So have you done proofs by contradiction? This is not that, that kind of a proof. But proofs are important because they really let you understand what's going on with the underlying concept. And you need, again, complex numbers. You actually not only need complex numbers to understand 2060, but you will encounter, if you haven't already, the concept of frequency response, okay, body plots, both diagrams. And to really understand them, you need to know complex numbers. Right? So anyway, so let me ask you this. How do you then do proofs like so given the problem like this what would you do like how would you start out that's my question what would you do oh you mean you mean the left hand side this one start here 
Yes. Okay, so let z equals x minus iy. All right. Wow. So you said let z equals x minus iy. Yes. Okay. Okay. So what would you do with this? Let me ask you that. So this is equal to z. Okay. Mm -hmm. You mean this one? Wait, 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 wait. This, how is this related to this? It's not. So x squared plus y squared is not z. No. So you're telling me that x minus i, y, if x minus i, y is z, Okay. Okay. But you're saying x minus i y squared is x squared plus y squared? Uh huh. Okay. So you're saying, therefore, x minus i y the whole squared which is z squared is what wait this is what you're saying okay so but this is why i asked you this is not how you begin a proof all right so have you so basically this is it right so just leaving this out for now these are good ideas, but uh, let me do this. So you start from the left-hand side. Yes. Uh, which is x squared plus y squared, whole squared. And then you go to the right-hand side. Okay? Or you start from the right-hand side, which is a squared plus b squared over c squared plus d squared. And then you go to the left-hand side. So you have done proofs like this, right? Yes or no? So how do you prove things? So you all have taken like Calc 3, Calc 2 and all that stuff. So you have never done proofs? Okay, so well, let's start. Okay, it's, so this is it. You have to start from the left and go to the right and start from the right and go to the left. You can't do like both sides and compare. It doesn't work that way. Okay, full stop. Point number one. Point number two, which side you pick is where your brain or our brain comes in, okay? And it's, I mean, basically, they're both in many, are in both are the same thing, actually. However, that's the beauty of math. Usually, one side is easier to spot for most people. That is, you can go from the left to the right or from the right to the left. Okay? One side is usually easier to spot. In my case, I was able to go from the left to the right. Okay, so let's do that. So this is what I'm going to do. So let's start from the left-hand side, which is x squared plus y squared, the whole squared. Okay, now what, let's see what's given. Okay, and the thing we have to ask ourselves is, can we write what's given in terms of x squared plus y squared? And this is where your knowledge of complex numbers comes in. So let me ask you this. That's x squared plus y squared, right? So given is x minus i, y square root of a minus i, b over c minus i, d. Yes? Using common sense, x squared plus y squared is used, what do you think is related to? The left-hand side or the right-hand side of what's given? Huh? So the left-hand side, right? This is most likely related to this. Yes? How? So let z equals x minus i y right so usually what people do when they do proofs is on this 
side, they put in brackets some I assum some assumptions like z equals x minus i y, some properties they write on the right hand side. If the property is not proven, you have to prove it. Okay, and proofs may seem to be monotonous, but trust me, this is the best way for you to understand the ideas. Okay, so given z equals x minus i y, can I write x squared plus y squared in terms of z and something else? Think. So what is, let me ask you this, so this is also an appendix B. Given Z is X minus I, I Y, how do I get X squared plus Y squared from Z? That's my, that's my question. Yeah. Magnitude of Z, the whole square. That's one way. Okay. Now, so let's see. So can I use that over here? So let's do. What is z though? It's square root of a minus i b over c minus i d magnitude square. Yes? Yeah? Okay. So this is because why is it given x minus i y? which is what we said z is. I mean, you don't even have to do this. I just showed you this because this is a common trick that people play. You write, uh, this is a complex number, so the notation for that is z. That might help you see the pattern easier, okay? Given x minus i, which is z, is square root of a minus i, b over c minus i, okay? Yes? All right, now what? Now what? No, what should be squared again? Hold on, magnitude of z is square root of x squared plus y squared. So this whole thing should be squared. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Actually, I didn't do it this way. So, all right. So, this is magnitude of z squared. Yes? Okay. So, there's squared right there. Okay. Fine. Now, what? Now what? This is right so far, okay? I didn't do it this way, but this will work. Now what? So okay, start thinking, right? So what do I want I, on the right-hand side? So let's look at the right-hand side now because we have basically a minus ib over c minus id, and that's very close to this one. Yes, that's good. Is that clear? So, okay, now what do you do? So, this is what we want. So, I'll start thinking. Think about what ifs. Like, what? How could this ideally work out? Like, how would you ideally, how do you remove the square root? The square root is a problem. What do you do with it? Square, 
the square is the inverse of square root but is the square applied to the square root or the magnitude huh the magnitude right so the question now is can you do this magnitude squared square yes can you do that you understand what i did so can i mathematically do that so if you can do this what happens so let's see i'll put a question mark there let's see if this actually helps us yes so now what happens magnitude the square root and the square cancel each other yes this squared yes oops i can't draw curly braces anymore okay so the magnitude of z1 over z2 is magnitude of z1 divided by the magnitude of z2 yes what's the magnitude of the numerator what's the magnitude huh what's the magnitude of the denominator whole square yes so what's this so plus d square is rhs yes so you, have you seen this little symbol in your math book what do you know what it stands for have you seen this qed have you seen it you know what it stands for there's a reason why math, math, there are, mathematicians don't write the good mathematicians don't write anything without a reason qed is the same as this okay it stands for quad erad demonstratum okay and i cannot if you know latin excuse me because i don't know latin so it's latin which means i have proved what i've started out but we haven't done that okay the whole proof hinges on this the so you understand right if i can um do this magnitude of the square root is the same as the square root of the magnitude i'm done yes so is that true so i'll put a side so if it's not true i mean you have to prove it yes so the question is if so here's the question if z is a complex number yes is i mean this is a complex number yes so is what did we do the magnitude of the square is that the same as this is it so you have to prove that we haven't proved proven that okay any ideas on how to prove it you understand the problem we're facing right now yes we have to we assumed that i don't think it's an appendix b but how would you prove it so here's a proof it's actually pretty easy yes that's it you use polar right you can write z so proof since z is a complex number z can be written as the magnitude of z e to the j argument of z yes when you take the square root of this what do you get so let's i mean i'm going to run out of room so let me try to do it here now just be careful of all the magnitudes and all that stuff this left hand side is square root of z yes so i'm just going to write it as the magnitude square root magnitude of z e to the j argument of z yes magnitude square correct but watch so this is what this is this to the 1/2 yes so this becomes 
square root of magnitude of z e to the j arg of z divide by 2 magnitude squared yes but the beauty of polar form is the magnitude of this guy is simply this so as a hint when you want to use polar form when you're doing magnitudes when you're taking square roots okay you want to write the complex number in polar form not polar form sorry exponential form i wrote in exponential form polar or exponential yeah, that's when you want to use it so this one and i'll let you finish this is actually true so the magnitude of this guy it doesn't matter what you do to this argument the magnitude is just this so basically you get magnitude well it's all it's done actually so the magnitude of this guy is simply square root of magnitude of z squared yes which is exactly your right hand side so this is true you understand the point is in exponential form or, or polar form the angle when you're computing when you're asking for the magnitude the angle doesn't matter right? it just pops out here is the magnitude because it's r yes it's very very subtle yeah, but it's very very important it's a point that trips people up even when you do body plots and all that stuff yeah so in other words a common question people ask you is oh i've given you the board magnitude plot can you find the transfer function you cannot not without the phase plot because to quantify a complex number you need both magnitude and phase okay so that's it so this is true i can take this out and that's because we just proved it here we're done okay the way i actually did this if you want to know this is a good approach this is basically x squared plus y squared so i'll write this over here this is important so i'll write this in red note x squared plus y squared is z times z conjugate okay or z times z bar somebody some some people write the conjugate as z bar okay so if you take x minus i y multiplied by x plus i y you'll get x squared plus y squared okay it's the same idea so any questions on this you have to do these proofs okay that's when that's the best way you'll understand all these ideas especially abstract ideas like complex numbers yeah okay good question so there is a property that so i'll write it here so the question is so here it is so note magnitude of z1 over z2 is the same as magnitude of z1 over magnitude of z2 okay that's your question yes let's prove it so prove this we haven't proven this yes right it's an appendix b i know that but let's so is that clear your question is a good question that's what i used here is magnitude of z1 over z2 the same as magnitude of z1 which is square root of a squared plus b squared yes divide by the magnitude of z2 which is square root of c squared plus d squared is that clear but now we have to prove this how do you prove this so okay so what form so again point number 1 you have to start from the left hand side or the right answer in this case it doesn't matter either way is easy and then go to the corresponding side yes so just for the hell of it mm, now let's start from the left hand side you try it from the right hand side it's in this case it's easy okay so the left hand side is and my hopefully this thing didn't crash no it didn't z1 over z2 yes So what do we do? So z1 is any complex number, yes. So how would you write z1? Which form? Standard, polar. I mean, polar and exponential are "quote unquote" the same thing. Okay. It's actually only standard and exponential, to be honest. Polar form is a form that came out because of engineers. They didn't like the e for some insane reason. Okay. So which one would you use? Standard form 
or exponential form to represent z1 and z2. So what? Huh? Exponential. Why? Huh? Almost, we're doing magnitude, but what? Yeah, magnitude is one operation. What's the other operation? What's the other operation here we're doing? Huh? Division. Which form is more ideal for division? Exponential. That's the main reason. Okay. So let's pick. Uh, let Z1 be represented as magnitude of Z1 e to the j argument of Z1. Okay. Z2 is magnitude of Z2. And now you can see it just pops out. Yes. Now, you can be like, so what? I can do this in standard form. No. So let me write that out. Standard form is very difficult. Note, if you say Z1 is A plus IB, Z2 is C plus ID, magnitude of Z1 over Z2 is magnitude of A plus IB over C plus ID. You don't know this yet. Okay? So what you have to do is you have to multiply and divide by the conjugate. Okay? Write this in the standard form and then take the square root of some of the squares. Is that clear? You can't, in standard form, so this is pretty difficult to do. So you have to, let me write this out. So this is a note. So A plus IB over C plus ID times C minus ID over C minus ID. So and then you got to go dot, 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 okay? Is that clear? Why standard form is difficult? You can, but it's difficult. So polar form, you'll see, just pops out. Or ex exponential form. I hate the word polar. Right. So this is magnitude of... So here is the complex number. e to the j argument of z1 minus argument of z2. Yes? You're finding the magnitudes. Is that clear? So that's how you divide complex numbers, right? You divide the magnitudes and you subtract the phases appropriately. Is that clear? But watch. It's so trivial. What's the magnitude of this guy? It's magnitude of Z1 over magnitude of Z2, which is RHS. Done. Okay? Is that clear? This proof might seem stupid. It's not if you use exponential form or polar form. If you use standard form, and there goes my screen, I think it shut off. But if you use standard form, it's not that simple. Okay. So let me try to connect this back. And hopefully this projector didn't die. But anyway, that's about it for today's lecture. So I'm going to stop recording and I'll get this connected back.